Say, Amos, this seems like Sunday. Yeah, well, it is Sunday. You see, Andy, we is on the radio now every Sunday on CBS for Rinso. That's right. Rinso, the new Rinso with Solium, brings you the Amos and Andy Show. Yes, sir, Rinso, the soap that contains solium, the sunlight ingredient, brings you a full half hour of entertainment with Lou Lubin, Eddie Green, Ernestine Wade, the Jubilaires, Jeff Alexander's orchestra and chorus, and radio's all-time favorites, Amos and Andy. And now, Lieber Brothers Company, the makers of Rinso, invite you to sit back, relax, and enjoy the Amos and Andy Show. Oh! Well, the Kingfisher's wife, Sapphire, has decided to visit her relatives in Chicago. The time for her departure has arrived, and we find Sapphire and the Kingfish sitting in the waiting room at the railroad station. George, you know I'm going to be away for 10 days, and that's longer than I figured on. What about money? Money? Well, just send me a few bucks whenever you can, honey. <laughs> uh, you know, I was thinking here, this ought to be a nice trip for you, honey. You know, George, this is going to be a long trip by myself on this train. Oh, by the way, uh, here's a package. Oh, this is so thoughtful of you. Is it something for me to do on the train? Uh, no, it's something for you to do in Chicago. It's my laundry. Uh, you... <laughs> you take that back home and wash it yourself. All right, all right, I'll wash it. You don't have to pop me on the head with it. <laughs> Say, George, look at the time. We better get on down to the platform. Yeah, you're right. We better get down there. And, George, you ain't gonna make me carry my suitcase to the train like you done last time, is you? No, honey, not only ain't you gonna carry it, but I ain't gonna carry it neither. This time, we're just gonna do the thing right. Uh, oh, Red Cap. Hey, Red Cap. Yes, sir. Uh, can my wife borrow your hand truck, please? <laughs> well, it's five o'clock. I might as well hang around the large hall here till supper, I guess. Maybe some crazy brother will come in here and pay his dues. Uh, come in. Oh, pardon me, but I'm lost. Uh, could you tell me where I could find the New York Tourist Sightseeing Service? New York Tourist Sightseeing Service. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, you go down to the next corner and you turn to your right. Uh, uh, are you going to take the sightseeing tour? Yes, I've never been to New York before, and I'd like to see the sights. Yeah, well, that's one block down, turn to your right, and then on the left hand side, uh, what is the charging for the tour? Uh, Ten dollars a day. Yeah, that's uh, one block down that way and then one block there. Uh, you just gonna sightsee for one day, huh? Oh, no, I'm gonna sightsee every day for a week. Yeah, well, you go down, uh... Why don't you take our sightseeing service here? <laughs> oh, is this office of uh, the sightseeing company, too? Oh, yeah, we is the largest sightseeing company in the world. Well, that's wonderful. I'll take your tour. Uh, what do you charge? Oh, uh, same as the other one, $10 a day. It's a standard racket all over, yeah. We <laughs> Well, uh, could you book me for the tour? My name is Lucy Benson, and I'm staying at the Lennox Arms Hotel. All right, uh, be here tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. Well, uh, will the bus be very crowded? A uh, bus? Uh, you were thinking of the old-fashioned sightseeing tour, madam. Uh, we was going to take you on what we call the intimate tour. Well, uh, how do we go from place to place? How do we go? Ha, ha, ha. You hoof it. <laughs> <laughs> into her. Well, that might be an idea there. All right, see you at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. Goodbye, Miss Benson. Well, $10 a day, seven days, that's $70. Hmm, that ain't bad. Think I'll drop by the drugstore and get a couple of pounds of foot powder and some mustard. <laughs> well, come in, Henry. Say, Kingfish, who was the charming gazelle that just flitted by? Oh, uh, that was Miss Benson, Henry. You see, I done opened up a sightseeing service and I'm going to take on a walk into a New York City. I pity my poor feet. Yes, well, why don't you get Andy to take her on the walking tour? He might enjoy it. You know, he's always receptive to feminine punkritude. <laughs> well, well, punkritude is good for him, all right. Uh, I don't want Andy to get the money, though, you see. Hey, wait a minute, though. 
If there was only some way that I could get uh, Anna to take her around town without him finding out, it was a sightseeing tour. Yes, but that's going to be hard, Kingfish. You know, Andy would have to do more walking than the policeman. Say, wait a minute, Henry. I think I got something there. I'll report Andy to the FBI and tell him the gal is a spy or something, and it's his duty to take her around. I'll get him to work the first week for nothing as his basic training. Yes, well, I don't think you'll have much trouble getting Andy to be around with that girl. Uh, yes, that Miss Benson is some number, ain't she? Oh, yes. You know, whenever I brush shoulders with a gal of that type, I immediately compare her with my wife. Yes, me too, Henry. But, you know, Kingfish, we're not so bad off, though. No. While Miss Benson may have charm, beauty, grace, and loveliness, our wives are stable. They got common sense. They got... Say, Kingfish, I believe we're getting the short end of this. Yeah. Thing. <laughs> Well, here come Andy now. I better get on the telephone. Well, hello there, Kingfish. Hi. Say, what is that sign on your door? Secret FBI headquarters. Fires keep out. <laughs> uh, just a minute, Andy. I was on a direct wire here with headquarters down in Washington, D.C. I'm talking in code. Oh. Uh, hello? Uh, Abel Fox. Uh, this is X-9. Wilco. Roger. Over. Geronimo. <laughs> uh, and uh, give that to the head man down in Washington, will you? Well, I'll tell you his name in code. J. Edgar Vacuum Cleaner. <laughs> uh, what's that? Well, thanks a lot. Two dots and a dash to you, too. So long. Hey, Kingfish, uh, how'd you ever get a job with the FBI? Well, I'll tell you, Andy, this morning I went down to the unemployment office, and while I was down there, a job come up with the FBI. Naturally, I got it because of seniority. What you mean, seniority? Well, I ain't worked longer than anybody else in the place. You see. <laughs> well, is you with the FBI now? Is I with him? I was working on one of the biggest cases they got. Yeah, what kind of case, Kingfish? Well, there's supposed to be a secret, Andy, but I know you will keep it quiet. Uh, oh, sure. uh, there's a girl staying at the Lennox Arms Hotel by the name of Lucy Benson, and we of the FBI think she is a European spy. No fooling. What made you think so? Well, the first thing that happened that uh, roused up our suspicion was a little thing that happened at the hotel that might have passed without nobody noticing it. Yeah? What was that? She come down into the lobby with a pick and shovel and asked the desk clerk if he could direct it to the nearest uranium mine. <laughs> well, tell me this. Why don't the FBI put her under arrest? Well, we can't do it till we get some evidence on her. Last week, we was trailing her, and she went through a secret atom bomb factory, but we couldn't do nothing about it because she paid the regular 25-cent sightseeing fare, you see. <laughs> well, what is she going to do about trapping her? Well, uh, now she is making believe that she is a tourist while she is subversing the country. Uh. So what we going to do is to disguise a secret agent as a sightseeing guide and take around and kind of keep tabs on her, see? Mm, yeah. uh, say, Andy, uh, I just thought here, how would you like to join up with the FBI and handle the job? Ain't interested, Kingfish. Oh, you'll be doing the FBI a great service. Sorry, too dangerous. The spy is a beautiful figure and she's a good-looking gal. Shake hands with your new FBI man. Yeah. <laughs> now, put it there, Andy. Shake hands. Uh, glad to have you with us. Now, the first thing i got to do now is to give you the FBI uh, oath. Okay, okay. All right, uh, Andy, take the pledge. Here we go. Yeah. I, Andrew H. Brown, swear to keep my big mouth shut and to walk my feet off from the country. Yeah. I also swear not to tell anybody that I was the FBI agent and to go on looking stupid so nobody will suspect that I was suspecting them. <laughs> I do. All right, report here tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock, Andy. Yeah. FBI man Brown, you can now start walking spy Lucy Benson around town. What do you mean, walk? Don't I get an automobile? No, Andy, use the sign to the FBI Foreign Spy Division dismounted. Oh. <laughs> and Andy, as long as you is on a special mission, we better synchronize our watches. Yeah, well, tell you the truth, Kingfish, my watch is down at Honest Joe's pawn shop. Happen to think mine's down there, too. <laughs> Let's call up Joe and have him to synchronize him, man. <laughs> well, I hope this works out and we catch her. Andy, when we close in on her, it's going to be like that fella that had the walls fall on him at one time. What fella? Andy, let me tell you about old Joshua. Yeah, we'll tell you about old Josh 
Now they tell the good Lord that Joshua's spear was well nigh twelve feet long And the point of the hip was a double-edged sword and his mouth was a gospel horn But bold and brave he stood salvation in his arms Go blow them a ram horns, Joshua cried, keys the devil can't do you no harm That morning, Joshua bit the battle of Jericho, Jericho, Jericho Then up to the walls of Jericho, wow. they marched with spear in a hand. Wow. Go blow them a ram horns, Joshua wow. I caged the battle them in my hand. My hand. Then the ram the lamb horns began to blow, the trumpets began to sound. Oh, Joshua cried, glory, and the walls come tumbling down. Then the ram the lamb sheep horns begin to blow, and the trumpets begin to sound. Oh, Joshua shouted, glory! And the walls come a-tumbling down That morning Josh bit the battle around Jericho Around Jericho Around Jericho Josh bit the battle around Jericho And the walls come a-tumbling Down! This is John Lake. Now, I'm going to talk about Rinso. New Rinso with Solium. And all I want to do is tell you a simple fact. New Rinso with Solium gets white clothes whiter than new and washable colors brighter than brand new. That's right, not just whiter, but whiter than new. And washable colors not just brighter, but brighter than brand new. Now, I think you'd better try New Rinso and see it happen yourself. The secret is Solium, Rinso's new amazing scientific sunlight ingredient. And new Rinso is so wonderful, it's such an entirely new idea in washing clothes, it will even do this. Clothes that are dried indoors, wash that's dried in the cellar or the attic, will turn out really brighter. Rinso with Solium puts sunshine in your wash. Rinso is safe for clothes and so kind to hands. Next wash day, Better try New Rinso yourself. Remember, only New Rinso contains solium. Well, Shorty the Barber, what is you doing in your shop with the windows wide open, your coat off on a cold day like this? Oh, this is great. I, it'll make the red corpuscles in your body bigger. A, a healthy man like me has got to have fresh air. I'm so healthy that nothing bothers me. I would... Oh, get you! <laughs> have you got two aspirin tablets? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, hey, uh, Shorty, look here. Is you see Danny today? Danny was in here a little while ago, King Fish, and he told me about this beautiful gal he was taking around town sightseeing. And he says he's working with the FBI. Yeah, he's a secret agent, and uh, keep this under your hat, Shorty. The gal is a spy. Spy, huh? See, you, you know that reminds me. I, I, I was a police detective once myself. My very first case involved a suspicious woman, too. Mm. We had to get her. So the chief said to me, he sent me up to her apartment. He said, Shorty, bring her here. I said, okay, chief. I had handcuffs. I had two pistols. I even had a street jacket. So I went right up to her apartment. And I knocked on the door. And I, I, I was... Uh, you know, King Fish, the, 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 the thing didn't work out. <laughs> Uh, why, Shorty? She wouldn't let me in. <laughs> uh, uh, hey, look here, Shorty, did Andy tell you anything else when he was here? No, just that he was taking this gal around sightseeing and that she'd give him $10 as a fee. Say, wait a minute, you say that she'd give him $10? Mm. Oh, me, she giving the money to him instead of me. 
I got to think of some way to do both that and some way to straighten that out fast. You, you, you know, Ken Fish, I, I really envy Andy going around with a beautiful gal like that. I, 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 I went around with a beautiful gal once too, but, but, but she, she said I was too short for her. And imagine that. She said you was too short for her. Mm-hmm. That, 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 that's right. Yeah. And, and I, I, I made up my mind right then and there. I made up my mind right then and there that I would grow taller like other fellas. You would say you're going to grow taller, huh? Mm-hmm. And sure enough, after working on it for a year, I increased my height by two full inches. Well, how'd you do it, Shorty? Oh, very simple. I took, I took different kinds of vitamins. Uh, I, I went to a gymnasium. Uh, I, I, I eat special food. That, that, uh, you can, I, 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 <laughs> elevated shoes. <Yeah. laughs> Well, if I can just convince Andy that he has done betrayed the FBI by taking ten dollars from Miss Benson, maybe I can get it back. Oh, here comes Andy now. Uh, hello there, Kingfish. Hey, what you reading there? Uh, Andy, I'm glad you're here. I was just looking over a bulletin I received in code from Washington listing the unfaithful employees of the government. It's called the Traitors of the Month. <laughs> well, who's on the list this month? Well, I was just uncoding it here now. They say here the following is a list of traitors wanted by the government. Axis Sally, Tokyo Rose, Lord Ha Ha, and Andy Brown. What is this here? Wait a minute, sir. Wait a minute. Uh, you mean my name is on the list of traitors? Yeah, there it is right there. Plain as the nose on your face, right in them dots and dashes. There it is right there. Yeah, well, Kingfish, why would they have my name on the list of traitors? Well, I don't know, Andy. Has you done anything against the United States government in any way? Like accepting money from a girl spy or anything like that? <laughs> well, I just happen to think. This afternoon, Lucy Benson gave me $10 for today's tour while we were sitting on a bench in Central Park feeding the pigeons. But how could the FBI find out about that so quick? Them was carrier pigeons, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the FBI stops at nothing. Yeah, that FBI is smart, all right, ain't they? Yes, you're right, Andy. Look at the way they caught Benedict Arnold. How'd they do that? Yeah, well, he went into the theater one night and the head usher was a G-man. He happened to hear Benedict Arnold hissing at one of the newsreel shots of the American Revolution, and he turned him in right in. Yeah, well, what'd they do to Benedict? Well, they didn't waste no time with traitors, you know. They strung him right up in the lobby of the theater right next to the popcorn machine. <laughs> he kicked so much, he spattered butter all over the lobby. I'm going to enough around there. Well, listen, Kingfish, I can't imagine the FBI looking for a gal as nice as Lucy Benson. Well, now, that's just the imprint that she gives, Andy. it? Take a tip. Don't get too friendly with her. Another one of our agents made a big mistake of kissing her. Two minutes later, he was dead. Mm, what'd she do, Kingfish? Shoot him? No, nearest thing we could figure out, she had a hypodermic needle and a pivot tooth. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and uh, it was like a snake bite with one fang. <laughs> well, tell me this, Kingfish. Who is she spying for? Uh, spying for? Uh, for foreign countries, and uh, uh, did you know that there are certain countries on the European continent that ain't worried about the United States Army, the United States Navy, the Air Force? What they is after is the American underground. Underground? Yeah, Fort Knox. <laughs> you know, Kingfish, this gal Lucy Benson sounds like a dangerous woman. I'm going out with her again, and if she makes one false move, I'm going to turn her into the police. Well, now, that's the spirit, Andy. Just uh, give me the $10 now, though, and I'll return it to headquarters in Washington. Yeah, and Kingfish, please be sure and explain to Mr. Hoover that I ain't no traitor to our country, will you? Yes, and if I can get a hold of that pigeon in Central Park, I'll straighten him out, too, Andy. <laughs> well, hi, Amos. Hi. Come well, in. Oh, hi there, fellas. Is you leaving, Kingfish? Oh, uh, yeah, just going out. See you later. So long, fellas. So long. So long, Kingfish. Well, Andy, I ain't seen you for a couple of days. What's new with you? Amos, I got a big job now. I'm working as a traitor for the FBI. <laughs> well, that's a good job. Uh, 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 you was doing what, what? Say that again, will you? Listen, Amos, I got to take out a girl that was in the American Revolution selling popcorn. <laughs> She's a snake charmer, too. You know, it seems like every time I see you lately, you has been saying strange things, ain't it? Oh, no. On account of the FBI, I was talking in code. Well, you was always talking in code, or you're talking in circles, or you're talking crazy. Now, tell me in plain English once, what is you doing? Ain't nobody listening, is it? No. I was flying to Washington to see some pigeon that's got a pivot tooth. <laughs> Say, 
Say, Kingfish, I got to see you right away. Yeah, well, come in, Andy. What you been doing since yesterday? Well, Kingfish, you know I've been watching this gal Lucy Benson like a hawk. Oh, that's fine, Andy. Yeah, that's fine. And Kingfish, I has done turned her over to the police this morning. Yeah, that's the spirit. I like this. I like, uh, uh, you done turned over to the police. Yeah. We was down by the water, and I caught her taking pictures of a battleship. So I called the police, swore out a warrant, and had her thrown in jail. Well, now let's everybody calm down around here now. <laughs> you ain't done gone berserk in the head and had nobody rest and put in jail, is you? Uh, look, if that's Mr. Hoover, tell him about it, will you? Uh, hello? Hello? This is Lucy Benson. Oh, yeah, now wait a minute. I can explain the whole thing. You are gonna explain nothing. I've never been so mortified my whole life. I've just been released from jail, and I'm going to sue you both for $5,000 for false arrest. Yeah, but listen, uh... I'll see you in court. Goodbye. Andy, uh, that was Lucy Benson. Ha, ah, ah, ha, ah. That gal's in plenty of trouble, all right. Uh, what's my next case, Kingfish? I think it'll come up in court in a couple of days. Let's go over and see Stonewall, the lawyer, will you? Come on, Andy. There are only five more days to enter Lieber's Great Mercury a Day contest, so get your entries in right away. Prizes in all are $100,000 in new cars and cash. Here are the names of five winners, each of whom won a brand new 1949 Mercury. Mrs. Alvin M. David, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Mrs. John Berkmeyer, Chicago, Illinois. Mrs. V.E. Scrivener, Gloucester Courthouse, Virginia. Mrs. Francis Niari, Honolulu, Hawaii. And Mrs. Ann Cameron, Riverside, California. Yes, each one of those people won a new Mercury sedan, and you can do it, too. All you have to do is finish this statement in 25 words or less. I like Rinso because... That's all. Send your entry with one Rinso box top to Lever's Mercury a Day Contest, Box 3, New York 8, New York. That's Box 3, New York 8. Enter as many times as you like. Put the name of your storekeeper on each entry. Only residents of continental United States, Alaska, and Hawaii are eligible. Follow the complete rules on the entry blank you can get at your store. You can win a new Mercury four-door sedan. So enter Lever's Great Contest every day until it closes next Friday. I'm going to warn you spectators for the last time. If there's any more noise in this courtroom, I shall ask you to leave. The plaintiff's counsel may proceed with the questioning. Thank you, Your Honor. Now, Miss Benson, will you continue with your testimony? Well, like I was saying, I was going to look up some distant relatives of Mama's, but I lost their name and address, and then I ran into these men who told me they were sightseeing guides, and besides paying them $70, they had me falsely arrested. I think that'll be all, Miss Benson. Yeah, if uh, Mr. Stonewall, the attorney for the defense, would care to cross-examine Miss Benson, he may do so. Yes, sir, Your Honor. Be there in a second. <laughs> uh, get up there now, Stonewall, and go to work. Uh, listen, Kingfish, I'm going to start some fireworks. Good. Now, you watch me go into action. I got a question here that'll blow this case wide open. Yeah. Here's where the fireworks really start. Will the defense attorney proceed? Yes, <laughs> now, Miss Benson, is it not true that under the alias of Maggie Bronson, you served an eight-year prison stretch in the Ohio State Penitentiary for armed robbery in 1926? I hardly think so. I wasn't born till 1928. <laughs> now, so much for the fireworks. <laughs> Your Honor, now that's all the questioning. Could, could, could I recall one of the defendants, Mr. George Stevens, back to the stand? You may. Mm. Mr. Stevens, come on, take the stand, bub. <laughs> yeah, yeah, come in, Stonewall. Uh, what you want to ask me? Sit down. Yes. Now, Mr. Stevens, when this poor, innocent girl first walked into your office, you had no intentions of frauding her out of her savings, did you? No, sir, I did not. Well, just when did you get the idea, Jippin'? Uh, Yo, 
Joanna, I object to him asking me that question. Yes, it does. It does seem to be rather a peculiar question. Well, don't worry about me, Judge. I know what I'm doing every minute. After all, I've been defending crooks like this for 20 years. <laughs> Stonewall, uh, uh, think of something to say in my favor, will you? Relax, bub. After all, I'm skipping over your police record. <laughs> Hurry this case along, please. Yeah, no, all right. No more questions. Get off the stand, bub, while you got a chance. Yes, sir. <laughs> your Honor, Your Honor, as attorney for the plaintiff, I would like to ask the other defendant, Mr. Andrew Brown, to take the witness stand for a few more questions. You want you up there, Andy? Look, and keep your big mouth shut, too. <laughs> Have a seat, Mr. Brown. Yeah, sir. Yeah, sir. Now, Mr. Brown, suppose you tell the court what possible reason you had for causing Miss Benson's arrest. I had to do it. You see, I was an FBI man. Oh, so now you're an FBI man. Huh? Your Honor, I object. On what grounds? Well, Mr. Brown posing as an FBI man is another crime entirely. <laughs> and I think... We ought to first find him guilty on this one, yeah. <laughs> this case is taking entirely too much time. Uh, Your Honor, excuse me for speaking up here, but I just had a thought. Couldn't we settle this here thing out of court? Well, now, that might be an idea. Yeah, I so you see, uh, what we could do here... Uh... Well, then, uh, here's my house. Thanks for walking home with me. I'll go on in. You know, Sapphire got in town today. Oh, she got back in town, huh? Yeah, i glad she didn't get here while that trial was going on yesterday. Yes, sir. Uh, by the way, what did you tell that Lucy Benson about settling out of court? Just what you told me. I said that you done skipped out of town on a cattle boat and gone to South America with all our money. Yeah, well, I'll kind of lay low till she get out of town. Uh, when is she leaving? Well, she can't stay long. She's broke. She told me she was moving out of the hotel today. Yeah, well, if you see her again, Andy, uh, tell her that I'm still in South America. Well, I'll get on in the house. Thank you a lot, Andy. So long, old boy. Uh, remember me to your wife. Sure. do 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 Is that you, George? Uh, hello there, honey. Well, welcome back. Oh, hello, George. Well, did you enjoy visiting all of your relatives? Oh, yes, and we're going to have a guest now. Yeah, who's coming? A cousin of mine that I ain't seen in 20 years. Come on in the parlor. Oh, uh, yeah. Now, this is my husband, George Stevens. This is Lucy Benson. Oh, no! Let me at him! Oh, wait a minute! <laughs> Amos, do you know what our announcer, Mr. Lake, says about Rinso with Solium? Uh, yes, Andy, Rinso with Solium gets clothes whiter and brighter than new. Amos, I'd like to emphasize that Rinso with Solium gets white clothes not just whiter, but whiter than new. And washable colors not just brighter, but actually brighter than brand new. Try Rinso, amazing new Rinso with Solium, and see for yourself. Today, more women use Rinso than any other wash day soap in the world. Good night, folks. See you next Sunday. <laughs> Sure to be with us next Sunday at the same time when Leader Brothers Company, the makers of Pew Rinso with Solium, will again present the Amos and Andy Show. Until then, good night to all of you from all of us. Amazing? Yes, but doctors have proved it. Life Boy Health Soap in your daily bath gets skin cleaner, stops B.O. as no other leading soap can. Get Life Boy right away. Sure and listen to the Amos and Andy show at the same time next Sunday. And on the 25th of this month, you can also hear Amos and Andy on the big Thanksgiving Day show over CBS. Stay tuned in for the adventures of Sam Spade, which follows immediately over many of these stations. This is CBS, where 99 million people gather every week. The Columbia Broadcasting System. (laughs) 